The Southern African Development Community Malaria Day is commemorated every year on the 6th of November with aims to create awareness about malaria and mobilize the community to participate in control programs. About 3.2 million people, almost half of the world's population, are at risk of malaria and stats show that a total of approximately 41,000 people lose their lives because of malaria. Good evening, my name is Zola Shalwana. Welcome to this edition of Soeta Today. Tonight we highlight the importance of knowing this data disease and how the SADC continues to raise awareness about it. Joining us in studio via Zoom is Assistant Director of Health Promotion, Mr. Sipiwe Gumede, who will be talking to us about malaria awareness. Mr. Gumede, welcome to the show and thank you for joining us tonight. Thank you and, and good, good evening to you, Zola, and to the viewers at home. Now, sir, for the viewer that is sitting at home and does not understand what malaria is, please explain it to us. What is it exactly? Malaria is a mosquito-borne disease that is transmitted by a bite of a special mosquito that is carrying malaria. And uh, when the mosquito bites, you is going to deposit in your bloodstream a parasite that is going to ultimately make you sick and eventually death if not treated early. Mm -hmm. so, so, so now I recently learned that there's a female mosquito and a male mosquito. So I want to understand that um, as soon as the female mosquito bites you, why does it take over a week for your body to show symptoms? Uh, your immune system is fighting the parasite. Remember, our immune system in our, in our bodies, if there's any infection, mm -hmm. our immune system reacts. So probably that's the reason why it takes almost seven days for symptoms to develop. So it has because nothing to... there's a to... war inside the body, yes, between your immune system and the parasite that has been deposited by a bite of a female mosquito. Mm -hmm. so, so this has nothing to do with, you know, the mosquito being female or male? No, it's uh, no, no, no. It, it doesn't have to do with that. The only mosquito that is able to to transmit malaria mm -hmm. is a female mosquito because okay. it actually needs your blood mm -hmm. for, for for fertilization mm -hmm. of of its eggs. Yes, to give birth to smaller mosquitoes. That's the only reason. It's biological reasons, mm -hmm. and uh, it's a certain type of mosquito that is found in areas that have got different conditions than mm -hmm. us in Gauteng. What I want to emphasize is here yes, is that in Gauteng, we don't have a malaria causing mosquito mm -hmm. because of the climate conditions. Okay. Our weather does not allow those mosquitoes to live in Gauteng. It's too cold for them. So mm -hmm. that is why we have. Okay, so, so, so that means we are safe in Gauteng. Tell us about other provinces. You know, I'm sure that there are provinces that are actually at risk of getting malaria because of the type of mosquitoes that they have. What are those provinces in South Africa if we have? The, 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 we've got uh, the three endemic provinces in South Africa. That is KwaZulu-Natal, uh, Mpumalanga, as mm -hmm. well as Limpopo. And not the all part of those provinces, the, the northeastern part of it. Like, mm -hmm. for an example, in KZN, we'll speak about the northern part of KZN, from mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. uh, Mangus, those areas that are bordering Mozambique. Mm -hmm. In Limpopo, you, 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 you speak about the, issue, the, the areas that at the far north end that we are bordering, uh, areas that are bordering Zimbabwe. Mm -hmm. you, you, you from the areas, for an example, and all those outskirts areas. And mm -hmm. in Pumalanga, those areas that are, are bordering also Mozambique. Mm -hmm. It's because of the climatic conditions mm -hmm. and why those areas are having, are having malaria causing mosquito. Mm -hmm. so, so let's bring it to, to, to the symptoms of malaria. What are the most common ones that one can look out for? Well, lastly, the, the, the major common symptoms of malaria, they are flu-like. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, most of the people who come visiting those endemic areas, they will be experiencing those, those uh, symptoms. Uh, 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 fatigue is one of them. In addition mm -hmm. to flu-like symptoms, we all know the flu-like symptoms, the, 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 the headache, tiredness, and uh, pain in your, in your joints. Mm -hmm. 
and uh, shaking of the body and sweating at night. Mm -hmm. So most of the time, the challenge here that we're having in, 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 in South Africa, when people are coming from malaria endemic areas and they come and show those symptoms and they go to a local doctor, to the healthcare facility, more often than not, our, our healthcare professionals, they miss mm -hmm. malaria because they don't think malaria because we don't see malaria more mm -hmm. often. They will give you treat a, a, a flu treatment. Mm -hmm. So the, the main message that we are, we, are, we are conveying as a department is that if you are from a malaria endemic areas mm -hmm. and within a week, you start showing symptoms which are flu-like, visit your your doctor or our, our our healthcare facilities and tell the attending doctor or nurse that we have been into a malaria endemic areas so that they are able to give you a rapid test for malaria mm -hmm. whether they can confirm it or exclude it mm -hmm. now um so for yes. someone who already has uh, malaria can they fully recover from it and also how long um, is, is it expected to take the recovery process uh, Malaria, it's a, it's, a, it's a treatable disease. Mm -hmm. In fact, no one should die out of malaria mm -hmm. in, 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 in Gauteng. Mm -hmm. the, 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 the major challenge why some people lose their lives is that they report late to mm -hmm. healthcare facilities. Mm -hmm. But if you report earlier, as soon as the onset of the symptoms develop, then the, the, our healthcare Mr. Sipue. Sir, can you hear me? I think we have lost him right there, but the conversation has just begun. And after the air break, we are talking about the role that the SADC plays to ensure that there is awareness about malaria, the strategies that they came up with and more. Make sure that you stay with us. Welcome back. You are still watching So It Today and thank you for choosing to stay with us. If you've just tuned in, we are talking about malaria awareness and we are still joined in studio by Simpiwe Gumede. Malaria remains one of the most devastating parasitic diseases affecting humans. In 2020, there were about 241 million cases and 672,000 malaria-related deaths. Now, this is a sharp increase from 2019. Now, sir, before we went to the ad break, there's a question that I actually wanted to ask about but unfortunately we had some network interruptions there we want to understand which countries are most um, are most at risk of contracting uh, malaria uh, largely in in in, in, in africa we, we 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 the major cases that are coming to Kaute, mm -hmm. they are actually people who have traveled to to mozambique mm -hmm. uh, mainly uh, followed by, by, by Zimbabwe, Malawi, Ethiopia, as well as other countries that are malaria endemic. But those are the four mm -hmm. that we are getting cases from people who have went to those countries. Mm -hmm. I think, I think in, 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 in line with that, with particular uh, reference to Gauteng, Gauteng, like I earlier indicated, does not transmit malaria. Mm -hmm. The only cases that we're having in Gauteng are imported cases, meaning is cases that are coming from other provinces mm -hmm. that are malaria endemic, as well as other countries which are malaria endemic, especially Mozambique. Mm -hmm. The reasons are simple, because Gauteng, for economic reasons, people are attracted to come to Gauteng. Mm -hmm. And when they come for, for work opportunities, then they become sick in Gauteng, and then they come to, to, to our hospitals. Mm -hmm. Now that's, uh, that's the we wanted to yes. Okay. Yes, Mama, you can continue. Oh, so sorry to interrupt you right there. So now, since the increase in the year twenty nineteen, have you been able to control the spread of, of malaria? Yes, there are a lot of interventions to to we, 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 we do in Gauteng to, to prevent and control malaria. One of them is it's 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 education, mm -hmm. public awareness. Mm -hmm. On, on the dangers. Like for an example, now we are approaching a, a, a December holidays and the malaria in South Africa is seasonal. Mm -hmm. 
like in, in, in summer, for an example, because a lot of trains and all those things. Now people will be traveling back to their homes in, 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 in Mozambique and other countries and as well as other endemic areas. So now when they leave, we've started with our educational programs targeting mainly bus terminals and other public transport facilities where we know that we those people that will be using that public transport and traveling to those areas. We've made a partnership with the taxi industry, for an example, mm -hmm. in those taxi ranks where we seek permission. And we work with them to distribute information. Radio campaigns, for an example, uh, 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 are also being used, as well as uh, uh, community level campaigns where we encourage people to seek treatment when they are having uh, malaria symptoms mm -hmm. um, as well as at our clinics we are able to, to cure malaria when patients are able to present it themselves earlier we do have medication at our facilities mm -hmm. now so i want to understand why is that most countries that uh, battle with this deadly disease are usually african countries i mean till this day most countries that we see on television um, or on social media are usually countries that are in africa what about other countries well, they, well, when they look into into the, the, the malaria issue in Africa, one of them is underdevelopment. And underdevelopment uh, of Africa as compared to other Western countries make it a fertile ground for mosquitoes to breed because there's a lot of space to breed. Mm -hmm. uh, and then also the conditions, mm -hmm. the climatic conditions allows uh, malaria carrying mosquito to be able to survive. Mm -hmm. and, and just to, to indicate, we normally say malaria is not necessarily embedded or, 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 or prone into African countries. Mm -hmm. It's prone to conditions. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like for an example, if in Gauteng we can have those conditions mm -hmm. that I've outlined earlier on, uh, 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 that are there in tropical areas mm -hmm. will have a, a, a malaria effect. Mm -hmm. But as I have explained that in Africa it's under development and the climatic conditions that are, are making those mosquitoes to be able to breathe easily. Mm -hmm. Yes. So, so I was actually going to ask a question, but I think it's, it's something that you just answered. I was going to ask, how does malaria affect the economy of a country? And you spoke about countries that are less developed, and that's particularly, you know, your, your African countries. And that's where we actually get to hear more about these cases. But my, my next question is, um, what role does the SADC play in making sure that people are aware of this deadly disease? And how has the response been so far? Mr. Spiwe? Well, remember, uh, SADEC, it's a, it's a combination. Yes, can you hear me? Yes, I can. Hello? Yes, I can. Yes, can you hear me now? All right. Uh, yes, I was, I was saying, remember that uh, uh, SADEC, it's a, it's a collaboration of, of, of countries in the Southern Africa. Mm -hmm. So what SADEC does, uh, uh, declares days like 6 November as SADEC, a malaria commemoration day because mm -hmm. this is our transmission season mm -hmm. in, in, in the southern Africa. That's the, the one of the reasons. And then the role of SADEC is to mobilize countries to raise awareness and commemorate and have commemoration events like in South Africa. Uh, we do have our commemoration events which are coupled with uh, various public awareness uh, campaigns done in district at different districts in different shapes and forms, mm -hmm. as well as other countries are also embarking at this particular process mm -hmm. simultaneously. That is the role of, of, of SADEC in coordinating the Southern African community to, to raise awareness, particularly around this particular day, and also in terms of developing capacity. Mm -hmm. To, to member states of SADC, sharing information, what is the latest scientific information around the, 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 the malaria. SADC does mm -hmm. that and coordinates those countries. Mm -hmm. And then pre-COVID uh, period, SADC will select one country mm -hmm. where they will do a commemorative event in that particular country. But that thing will have not been seen because of COVID. Probably as of next year, we'll see such, such, such events.
Mm -hmm. um, you spoke about collaboration, but uh, we'll have to take um, a short breather. And when we return, we talk about vaccines that health organizations have come up with to help decrease the spread of malaria and possible solutions. I also want us to talk about the role players in raising awareness of malaria. We will see you right after this. So stay with us. Welcome back. You're still watching So It Today. Thank you for choosing to stay with us. Unfortunately, we are about to wrap up the show. But before we do that, we are still talking about malaria awareness. And we are still joined in studio by Zoom by Simpiwe, Simpiwe rather, Gumede, who is the Assistant Director of Health Promotion in the Gauteng Provincial Department. Despite intensive research to rid the world of plasmodium, um, plasmodium parasite transported through the bites of the anophils and mosquitoes, the search for malaria vaccine continues continued for over 30 years. It was only last year that the first malaria vaccine was approved for the use by the World Health Organization. Uh, now, Mr. Sapir, before the aid break, I had a question for you, and I wanted to understand uh, what are the role, who are the role players, rather, what organizations have you partnered with to make sure that the awareness, is, um, awareness drive is well executed? Uh, thank you once more. It's media, media organizations across and uh, community uh, uh, structures as well as the NGO community, mm -hmm. other government departments, uh, to name a few, transport, tourism, education, because we partnered with the Department of Education to come in into their schools to the educate the learners on the importance of malaria prevention. Mm -hmm. uh, 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 as well as civil society organizations, you know, we do from time to time visit churches, you know, uh, they allow us to come to their churches just mm -hmm. for a few minutes, we speak to, to members of their churches. In short, there is a variety of, of, of stakeholders. Mm -hmm. We speak of traditional healers, for an example. Mm -hmm. Most people, when they are sick, their first stop is to visit a traditional, a traditional healer. Mm -hmm. So we educate the traditional healers uh, uh, about signs and symptoms of malaria, so that when people come in to consult and they only see that those those signs and symptoms, he'll be able to refer that patient to the to the facility. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's a whole range of, of, of stakeholders stakeholders in the in the community that. Mm -hmm. Now, um, let's talk about the vaccine that has recently been approved. Um, what is it and also how effective is it? Mr. Spiwe? Mr. Spiwe, can you hear me? Mr. Spiwe, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Um, do you so, uh, in addition to that, uh, in, in addition, the major, the other stakeholder is the academic world. Mm -hmm. You know, the, the academics, uh, they continue to do research on mm -hmm. malaria treatment and other uh, scientific issues related to, 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 to malaria. Mm -hmm. So, sorry. in the main, those are some of the, the stakeholders that we work with. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not sure if you got my previous question, sir, which asked about the, which was about um, the, the vaccine. I wanted to know um, what is the vaccine and also the one that has been recently oh, yes. approved and also like what is, okay, what's the vaccine and how effective is it? Uh, what, what we can say in South Africa, uh, we don't have the vaccine. In fact, for, for malaria, mm -hmm. as yet, we, we don't have a successful vaccine. Mm -hmm. Yes, as you mentioned earlier on, that research has been going on. It's over 30 years now. Mm -hmm. And up to this day, we don't have, we cannot declare and say we do have a malaria vaccine. Mm -hmm. But rather, what we have is a prophylaxis for malaria. Okay. Mm -hmm. Meaning, a prophylaxis is a medication that you take before you go to a malaria endemic area. Mm -hmm. And the only difference between a vaccine and a prophylaxis is that vaccines are long term. A year or two, that COVID vaccine, it mm -hmm. stays with you for over a year. Mm -hmm. Prophylaxis is, is only limited for a short period of time. So that is what we are promoting. And prophylaxis is available in, in our healthcare facilities mm -hmm. at, at no cost. 
and uh, if you can, you can also go to private uh, travel health clinics that will to, to give you vaccines and the, the doctors will advise you how to use it, especially depends which country you are going to and they will prescribe the necessary prophylaxis that is relevant to, to that particular country that you are going to. Mm -hmm. So so usually doctors would say um, prevention is always better than cure. And I want to understand if this pro um, prophylaxis is something that you can take to prevent malaria or it's not guaranteed to actually prevent um, the disease. Mr. Spiwe? Uh, okay. You know, with medication, yes, yes. With, with, with medication, it, it all depends on a lot of factors, you know. I don't want to commit myself to say it's 100% uh, mm -hmm. effective, but we do advise, as you say, prevention is better than cure. cure. Mm -hmm. Yes, that, that statement is it, very powerful that the best form of defending yourself against malaria is mm -hmm. not to visit malaria endemic areas, to mm -hmm. stay safe, and especially if you are pregnant. Mm -hmm. Pregnant women, are more vulnerable to malaria mm -hmm. and it might kill them as well as younger children who are under five. The reasons are simple, younger children, their immune system is not yet developed to be able to fight. But in an event that you are unable to, you want to go, we recommend prophylaxis. Okay. So, and then so... we'll take it from, yes. Mm -hmm. like, and um... it's not only prophylaxis, Mm -hmm. Just just also quickly to make this point, it's not only prophylaxis, it's other non-pharmaceutical measures that okay. you can take, like wearing long, long sleeve clothes and trousers to prevent mosquito bites. Mosquito bite, mosquito are mainly active during the night. Stay indoors mm -hmm. during the night if you are in that particular uh, uh, malaria endemic areas. There are creams that you can apply to your body that mm -hmm. will repel malaria. They call them mosquito repellents. Sleep under insecticide treated bed nets when you're a malaria endemic so that you mm -hmm. prevent a, a, a malaria. Mm -hmm. Yes. Thank you. So, sir, um, the last question, and I'd like you to please answer this briefly. For those who are traveling, um, especially to countries that are at most um, risk of getting malaria, how do you ensure that commuters um, are well informed about this deadly disease? And what tips do you have for them? You literally have 40 seconds. Uh, uh, we, 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 we go on radio campaigns. Mm -hmm. We go physically to public uh, uh, transport terminals. We have started from last week to areas where there are, there is malaria is it's, a, it's endemic. Mm -hmm. We educate them what do they need to do. And then we, we also partnered with other, other, other government departments, the taxi industry, for an example. We do have some messages inside our taxis. Mm -hmm. uh, we have given taxi drivers uh, audio material to play when they're traveling in, 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 to those two. Mm -hmm. All right, sir, thank you so much for joining us tonight on Soweto Today. Mr. Sampiwe, thank you very much for joining us. And we do hope that people have taken some health tips, especially people that we will be traveling to the provinces and also countries that he mentioned that are known as malaria endemics. Now, that was Sampiwe Gomede, who is the Assistant Director for Health Promotion in the Gauteng Provincial Department, talking to us about the importance of knowing about the deadly disease, which is malaria. Well, that's how we wrap up today's episode of Soweto Today. Remember, we love hearing from you, so please feel free to talk to us about the show by simply sending us an email on Soweto today at sowetotv.co.za. Alternatively, you can contact us on 011-9333000. From myself and the rest of the team, we will see you on the next news bulletin that's coming right after this. So goodbye for now and thank you for watching.